Welcome to the Mid Suffolk Light Railway, where work is progressing on my Ruston 48. Now, the big question I know that most of you want to know is, does it run? Well, yes, yes, it does run. But I'm not going to fire it up in here because the exhaust has been taken off and part of the silencer, so I can paint it. So we're not going to run it today. Since it turned off in the back of a high hab, what's actually happened with my locomotive? Well, it's mostly been just wire brushing, rotary wire brushing, sanding, some of that horrible smelling, very strong, makes your eyes water, nitro more stuff that we've been painting on, just to strip away the old paint and just to get it to this state. And this has taken a surprisingly large amount of work. It's also given us the opportunity to be able to just examine it a bit better and yeah, just work out what else we'll need to do in the future. For instance, the roof will need replacing yeah, maybe five years' time. We could spend time and effort sorting it out now, but honestly, cost and time-wise, just replace it. It is now ready for painting. We have a painter coming in just a few days after I've shot this video, and then we can actually start, put the primer on it, put some undercoat on it, and actually make it look really nice, which is going to be fantastic. And also, as much as I'd love for this to live in the shed here, it can't. This is a working environment for, well, rebuilding trains and carriages and wagons. So it can't live undercover. So we have to do a good job painting it to try and well, preserve it for longer. Because in all fairness, now we've stripped it down, it's in pretty good condition. There are a couple of tiny little bits of rotten pitting and a couple of holes. But really, we were really happy and relieved when we, well, when we stripped this down. This is really far better than we ever thought it could be. No, more than we dare tell. There is, there is a bit of rust along this part here, which goes into there. Apart from that, it's mostly solid. It's actually, it's really solid. The engine's been looked at. We've reconnected the cold start that didn't work. A couple of things have been tightened up. A new fan belt's gone onto the fan, so the fan turns properly now and other minor little tweaks with it. The electric systems now work. I've now got working lights on the horn, and the cab inside works, and everything kind of runs as it should. A few weeks ago, we had this in here, and we took it up to full power and just left it running with the idea of just letting it work itself through, clear itself out a bit. And the entire area around here was littered with quite large pieces of carbon. And now it sounds a lot nicer and runs a lot nicer and starts so much better but that's partly due to putting a, a brand new battery on it. In fact, we haven't got much more to do. We've done the air filter, the fuel filter, and the big job remaining is a oil change and a new oil filter. But for that, we're going to wait till we've taken the thing out for a day, given it a nice good run up and down, actually used it a bit, and get all of the old oil to circulate around any particles and bits that are in it, hopefully into the old filter, just to give it the best chance at continuing. The sandboxes that sit in here, they've been removed, and now they've gone away for shop blasting. And that's going to make them a bit better, but we wanted to be able to get and check the metal that was behind here to make sure it wasn't terribly corroded. And the good news is, it's not. A lot of rust and stuff, but no, nothing to worry about. It's, it's mostly fine. And of course, the sandboxes will come back and we will refit them. We have sandboxes because metal on metal, you don't have an awful lot of adhesion and in less than perfect conditions, bit of rain or leaves on the line, you can lose that little bit of adhesion you have. So we have sanders which just chuck sand down, give you a bit more grip. So they're kind of important. Since you saw it last, there's been a couple of cosmetic changes. The doors have gone back on, which took a lot of work. We don't think they have been fitted to it since the cab had work done to it in the early 90s. We've also had a new set of windows installed in the side, so it is actually becoming slowly weatherproof. And when the windows that we've taken out go back in, the cab will actually be weatherproof and the rain and leaves and all the horrible stuff that was in it when we went and looked at it the first time will be kept out. And we think it will be the first time, well, in fact we're sure it will be the first time that it's had windows and doors all the way around because the cab was rebuilt in the early 90s and none of these things were actually fitted. It kind of was in the condition a bit shinier, but more or less the same as when I bought it. So. That's basically where we are with it. It's slowly coming forward. We have made it worse, effectively, in the quest to make it better. 
and it will be better. It's, it's actually a lot more healthy, and though it isn't a complete colour, it was briefly green. We had it painted green just as a kind of, this is what it's going to look like, and to give it a bit more protection while it was sat outside than the flaking red paint would get. It already looks a lot better with this all being nice and smooth, and I've put a lot of hours in myself, but a lot of very good people from the railway have given their time to help volunteer on this, and uh, for that I'm very grateful, and and a lot of my friends as well. They've come up and I've had people for the last couple of weeks, almost every evening, I've had my friends come in and given up their evenings to help strip this down. And so to you guys and to the, all the volunteers at the MSLR who have given me advice, help, or just been there, thank you very, very much. It wouldn't be at this stage without you and it is going to be absolutely fantastic when it is done. The other big bit of news is that Sir William McAlpine, the gentleman who I bought this locomotive from has sadly passed away and so it's really tragic that he won't ever get to see it here in its new home where it, he's really loved and it fits in so amazingly well it looks so good here it just it's perfect and the entire railway has jumped on board and thinks it's just wonderful for our little railway so in all, it's actually quite a solid little machine. In fact, it's probably the most reliable vehicle that I own. Every time that we've gone to fire it up and use it since it's been here, it's worked. And that's more than I can say about anything else in my collection. Which is a bit sad, really, isn't it? That my most reliable and usable vehicle is something that doesn't go on a road. So there you are, guys. A little update on the Rustin 48 and proof that some of my projects do actually progress, especially when I'm assisted by a whole heap of my friends and a lot of very highly skilled, very dedicated volunteers from a railway. And so the next time you see this, it will be fully painted outside and doing something. And I promise we will have it running because it sounds, well, I think it sounds wonderful. It's a nice big old diesel and it just makes a lovely agricultural chug. None of this performance stuff for you guys. No, 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 no agricultural chug. So, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, like, subscribe, and leave a comment. And I'll see you next time. Ta-ra!